Today, uh, we welcome Jared Alper from the University of Washington. Uh, he's going to tell us about coherent completeness and local structure theories. All right, thanks. Thanks for the introduction, Ravi. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to visit Stanford again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, actually, before the pandemic, it was one of my last trips. I was there in, in January for Ben's defense. Uh, and what I'm talking about today is actually quite related to uh, Ben Lin's uh, thesis defense. Uh, and, uh, but actually the title should be reversed. I'm gonna start talking about local structure theorems, uh, kind of giving a complete picture, kind of reviewing uh, the developments over the last five years. And then uh, I'll, in, in the process, I'll emphasize the, the importance of coherent completeness. But uh, let's get started. And, So the, the, the story starts really uh, by this uh, remarkable theorem of Domingo Luna proven in the 70s. Uh, unfortunately, Luna recently passed away, but uh, it was this paper that was, it was this that, that uh, Ravi suggested I read when I was a graduate student at Stanford. It's actually the second paper, I, research paper that I read during my graduate studies. Uh, here it's listed, uh, so yeah, I, I guess now um, maybe as an outcome of the Stacks project, grad students are not learning as much French as they were. I mean, I know I, I suffered through it in my second and third year reading through EGA, but um, I'll save you the translation of this. I've just translated directly into English. And so here it is. This is Luna's original slice theorem for group actions. The starting point is we take, uh, we take a reductive algebraic group acting on an affine scheme. Um, and we fix a point of it, a K point. Uh, and the main assumption here, that this is the critical assumption, is that the stabilizer is linearly reductive. And then with those hypotheses, the conclusion is that, well, let me draw, draw a picture here. Here you have your, uh, your variety, G is acting on it. And so you fix a point X and then uh, we look at the orbit of this, it may not be closed, that's GX. And then, the, and then the, the, the conclusion of the theorem is that there's this locally closed GX invariant subscheme that's sort of transverse to the orbit. That's this slice spec A. And it's uh, the stabilizer acts on it. So GX acts on this slice in such a way that like the, G, the, the stabilizer equi equivariant geometry of the slice is, is sort of a tau locally, like the G equivariant geometry of X. Um, for more precisely, yeah, we have this a tau cover of X. And this, when they put the, this uh, GX over the times here, it, it, it indicates that I'm taking uh, the quotient of the diagonal action of the stabilizer on spec A and G. We have, we, have a, we have a question, which is what does linear redu linearly reductive mean? Oh yeah, that's great. I mean, this is such a key hypothesis and an important point uh, throughout the talk. So yeah, let me remind you that this hypothesis means, uh, yeah, that all representations are, are, are completely reducible. Uh, or in other, way, in, in other words, taking invariance of this group is an exact functor. And maybe just to highlight, this is not, uh, yeah, I don't want to, uh, yeah, uh, just to highlight that, that this is different than uh, reductivity and positive characteristics. So in, in characteristic zero, linearly reductive groups are the same thing as reductive group schemes, uh, but this is different in characteristic P. For instance, GLN in characteristic P is not linearly reductive, but it is reductive. So this is a strong hypothesis in characteristic P. Um, and oh, actually, it, it, and it's not really a, a mystery. I mean, it's quite tra transparent the, the, like why you need this hypothesis and how you produce this slice. I mean, the argument is essentially you take X and then you consider, you basically reduce to the smooth case and then you have an Atal map to the tangent space. And then you just look at, uh, you can write this as the tangent space of the orbit and then because, be, because all of these have uh, are representations under the stabilizer and the representations are completely reducible, you can find a, a, uh, a decomposition like this where this is the normal space to the orbit. And you just pull back this normal space to the orbit 
under this map to the tangent space. And that's how you produce the slice. Just give me one second here. <laughs> he, he somehow got in here. <laughs> okay. Um, and so actually, yeah, this part of the theorem is not that difficult. What, what takes more work in Luna's original paper is sort of the, the, the following refinement that if the orbit is closed, then this implies that, in fact, you can arrange the slice so that everything is a pullback from their GIT quotients. And moreover, this map is a tau. And this is Cartesian. This is sort of like the application of Luna's fundamental lemma here. And uh, just to, to remind you here, you know, G is acting on X, it's an affine scheme. And almost by definition, the GIT quotient is just the spectrum of the invariance. And so the point is not only do you get uh, an Natal neighborhood, it's actually the pre-image of an Natal neighborhood of the GIT quotients. All right, so that's Luna's theorem, and this is the starting point for this talk. Uh, but I'd first like to just restate this theorem in, in stack theoretic language. Uh, so that we have, these are the same hypotheses. Uh, and then the conclusion is the same. There's a, a GX invariant locally closed subscheme. And the statement that, and the, the statement can be reformulated just by saying you have an Atal neighborhood of the quotient stack by this slice mod the stabilizer. And this is what I really mean that the, I mean, the, the geometry of the quotient stack is like the GX invariant geometry of X, and it's a tau locally the same as the stabilizer invariant geometry of the slice. Um, so this is really, yeah, a, a useful result in equivariant geometry. And you can even, in the smooth case, almost from the proof that it, it, this is also a tau over the action of the normal space to the orbit acting with the stabilizer. Right, and this is just a, a vector space, which, uh, which you can understand quite concretely. Um, and so this isn't quite the same. I mean, this is the GIT quotient versus stack quotient, which aren't obviously, I mean, something would presumably need to be done to make them related, I guess. Maybe it is, maybe there's well, some- well, yeah, well, this thing is the same as, Maybe I should have pointed that out. This is if you, if you this is the same as, as taking this mixed quotient, uh, and then taking the quotient of this by G. So saying that yeah, so like if we go back to this picture, it, I mean at least at least the top part of the row is is, is equivalent to uh, just this a tau a tau picture, and and yeah, and this this you only have this case if it's smooth. Uh, right, and maybe going forward uh, is uh, this is now dating back. This is the archive date. This from five years ago. This is joint work with Jack Hall and David Ridd. Is we basically generalized this theorem. We showed that this is sort of a phenomenon that happens for any algebraic stack, uh, at least with some mild hypothesis. And so uh, this is this this theorem. Let's just go slowly through the hypothesis here. We have. Um, the important hypothesis here is that we're taking algebraic stacks with affine stabilizers. So you don't allow automorphism groups to be like elliptic curves or abelian varieties. And then we have the same critical hypothesis here that the stabilizer is linearly reductive. And then the conclusion is just that there's an Atal neighborhood of the quotient stack. Uh, there's an Atal neighborhood, which is a, a, a quotient stack of an affine scheme by the stabilizer. Uh, and moreover, just like before in the smooth case, um, or oh, let, let me actually say, yeah, the, 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 yeah, but before I say that, uh, I mean, this sort of justifies the philosophy that, you know, in, uh, you know, we build schemes from affine schemes and we patch them together in the Zariski topology, you know, and an algebraic space is just patching affine schemes together in the Ital topology. And this, so this is justifying like sort of the idea that you can think of algebraic stacks, at least where the, closed points have linearly reductive stabilizer as patching together, uh, patching together these nice quotient stacks in the Atal topology. 
So, so sort of by the definition of, of, a, of a stack, you're patching together affine schemes in the smooth topology. So we sort of, but you actually get it in, in the italic topology if you go to these quotient stacks. Uh, and, and the reason why this is so nice is because this is sort of the most well understood stack you can, you can have. You have a GIT quotient. And my original motivation for this name, I won't get into it in this talk, but was to basically use these, use these uh, Atal presentations and their GIT quotients, and then just patch these together in the Atal topology, patch of Atal topology to, to form um, a good moduli space of, of X. And now in joint work with Halper Meister and Heimlaub, we really haven't a nice theorem that allows you to do this. You need some conditions on the stack. They're called theta reductivity and S completeness. And they sort of assure that, that you can do this gluing and, and produce uh, a good moduli spaces for X. Okay, and, and moreover in, this, in the smooth case that this is actually, so if X is smooth, then, then this is actually, uh, you get this uh, like a, a tau roof diagram where this is a tau over the tangent space of the stack mod the stabilizer. And so there's nothing really simpler than this. I mean, this is, this is the first, if, if, if your stack is, is a moduli problem, then this is the first order deformation space. And you can understand quite concretely how the stabilizer acts and you can work this out. So you, this allows you to reduce proving things about your moduli problem to these simple uh, representations of the automorphism group. There are two questions. Uh, first, the uh, first one is, is, uh, is this like just a theoretical nice to know theorem or can you use it in practice for something? What's the, like do you use it for, uh, where do you look to apply them and like for local computations? That's, that's one question. All right, so I, I think that's a good question. I mean, one, uh, like, yeah, I was sort of highlighting the conceptual point that this allows you to think of stacks in this nice way. Uh, but it's also really crucial. I mean, just, I mean, because uh, when you prove something about moduli problems, you always want to reduce to varieties. And this allows you to reduce in the tau topology to these really nice ones. And like, uh, I mean, and yeah, th this was the key result that was necessary in my joint work with Halper and Meissner and Heimloff in order to construct a good moduli space. So yeah, that's, that's one application. Um, but it's, it's, there's countless, I think it's, it's already been used quite, quite widely. And they, yeah, is that, did I answer the question? Someone should jump in if they want to ask more about it. Yeah, that was, that was good, thanks. Uh, and just to highlight, like uh, this, this was already known in a few cases. In fact, Luna's theorem is the case where the stack is a global quotient of an affine by reductive. And even in that case, that, like Luna's theorem has content, like it's already a global quotient, but here we're arranging that it's a tau locally by the, by the stabilizer, not just by any group. And then in the case with finite stabilizers, uh, this was, is a more classic, it was known by Abramovich and this belief. Uh, and just because it, it, this is what motivates the concept of coherent completeness, let me get into a sketch of the proof because the, the conceptually it's very simple. And I'm gonna assume uh, that the point is smooth and because uh, this makes it technically much easier. And so that the whole idea is we have the stack X and we have the, the, the inaction of the stabilizer on the tangent space. So we can form this quotient stack, uh, I'll call it T which is the tangent space mod the stabilizer. And since, this, since the point is smooth, you hope that I mean, essentially that this is your tau model. I mean, the whole question is though, can you produce a map like this or, uh, or maybe a, a, at least a roof diagram? Uh, and, but at least here we have a GIT quotient. And so, uh, yeah, there's, there's basically three steps, four steps to this, to this argument. Step one is, is deformation theory. And here we use, and, and I wanna highlight uh, where we use the linear reductivity. 
So because it's because it, the stabilizer is linearly reductive, and because this point is smooth, that implies that the nth nilpotent neighborhoods. Let's write them Tn and Xn. That's of you know you have you have the origin in the tangent space, and here we have our point X. And so if you look at these nilpotent thickenings because it's smooth. And because uh, linearly adductive groups, there's there's no uh, um, up, up, uh, the, the cohomology vanishes. Uh, we get that these are actually isomorphic. So if we if we look at t zero, that's sits inside t one, and so on. T zero, by the way, is just a point with automorphism group the stabilizer. Uh, and since these are isomorphic, what this what this produces, I mean, these are these are isomorphic. So you actually get maps from T zero into the stack, from T one into the stack for all all neighborhoods. And so the idea is to build up a map from T to X by, and this is the formal statement. And then moving on, we need uh, the coherent completeness. Which is the following statement that if I take now, if I, now I want to, I have this GIT quotient here, I can complete that at the image of the origin. And then I could take this, the base change t hat. And, the, and coherent completeness is the statement that the, the category of coherent sheaves on this guy is the same as compatible families of coherent sheaves on the thickenings. So, um, I mean, what we would like to produce is a map from T hat to the stack X. And what allows us to do this is coherent completeness coupled with a Tanaka duality. Which is a statement uh, that if you want to produce a morphism from T hat to the stack X, it's the same as producing a functor on their, a pullback functor on their coherent sheets. And the coherent completeness plays a role because we can then identify this using coherent completeness with families of coherent sheaves. And then you can pull the inverse limit out. And then you could apply Tanaka duality again. And you get that this is just compatible families of morphisms from Tn into, into X. And that's exactly what we have. Those red arrows above give us these maps from these thickenings into X. And, and so therefore, we get a map from T hat into X. And this is really the yeah, starting point. From here, you know, you, you just sort of apply art and approximation. Maybe so, I won't spell that out. So making sure uh, I understand the pieces, coherent completeness is defined is just that means that statement that the, the coherent sheaves on the, uh, on the, uh, yeah. uh, and, the, and Tanaka duality means that maps of, of the coherent sheaves as tensor categories is the same as maps from T hat to X. Uh, yeah, essentially, yeah. I, I will define coherent completeness in a more general uh, framework in a moment, but in, in, in this context, uh, it, uh, it uh, uh, implies Right, exactly the statement that the coherent sheaves on T hat are is identified with that. And the Tanaka duality is a much more general statement, you know, exists really across, it's not just in algebraic geometry, but in topology and representation theory, there's a lot of different versions of it. And, and here I'm using a version of uh, Jack Hall and David Ridd, sort of inspired by work of, of Laurie, that sort of is, it was a, a generalization of this, these old theorems of uh, Gabrielle and Rosenberg saying that so that the abelian category of coherent sheaf determines the variety, but if you allow a tensor structure in the, in the, in the abelian category of coherent sheaves, then you can in fact not just recover varieties, but you can recover stacks and you can recover morphisms between them. Um, right, and then, yeah, so that was the hard work of getting this map from t hat to x, and then you just 
apply art and approximation for a functor over, over this one. Uh, great. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I wanted to say, oh, and here I just have it like sort of, uh, there's various applications of this result, uh, even towards standard equivariant geometry, we can recover generalizations of Sumihiro's theorem. And in this case, what I've written here is a generalizations of Luna's original slice theorem, where you can just weaken the hypothesis. Uh, so you no longer have to consider the action on affine scheme. It can be an arbitrary algebraic space. Um, but then you lose getting, a, 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 you go from a locally closed slice to an unramified slice. I mean, if you have a normal scheme, you can actually get it to be locally closed. But yeah, in general, you need to allow unramified extensions. I didn't want to focus on this. What I, what I want to get to sort of is, you know, I think we, like I had been trying to prove this, this theorem uh, about this local structure theorem of, of algebraic stacks for a long time. And we came, we thought like using Tanaka that duality and coherent completeness, we came up with this nice argument. And then for the last several years, we've just been like pushing this argument further. I mean, and, and if you just follow your nose, you can get a lot, you can get a lot more mileage from it. Uh, and it, on one sense, I really need these theorems for other applications, but on the other sense, we were sort of pursuing this just because we were just, we just, uh, we're just following our nose. Um, and so he, what I have here is a, is a relative version. The, the previous version was everything was over an algebraic and closed field, uh, but it, it, with some work, you can get it to work over an arbitrary base. But there's a bunch of subtleties here. So the way I formulated it here is that you can always arrange a tal no, a ta for a tal neighborhoods uh, by an affine mod GLN. And then we have a variety of refinements of this theorem. Uh, because remember before the, the quotient group was the stabilizer. Um, in the relative case, you need to deform the stabilizer. And, uh, and yeah, and you can do this, but I won't get into the technicalities here. Uh, and so here, yeah, and here's the newest version of this. So this is, we, I, we, I have a, we have a paper with, now with Halper and Meissner, uh, and this is not on the archive yet, but hopefully will be posted soon. And sort of uh, the starting point for that, for the slice theorems with respect to pairs is sort of motivated by something that even original, that appeared in our original theorem. So one way to think about uh, uh, of our theorem was that we had, so here we have our stack X and here we have, you know, the res residual germ of, of, our, of our point. Um, and, uh, and so if you consider an arbitrary subgroup H, you have BH. And then if we assume that this is a tau or smooth, then, then what, what the theorem produces is then a neighborhood like this, which is Patel and smooth, such that this is Cartesian. I mean, the original version I stated was the case when H was the stabilizer. But if you allow subgroups, the theorem is that you can extend, as long as that subgroup, here the point is that the stabilizer doesn't need to be linearly reductive, it's just the subgroup needs to be linearly reductive. Uh, and, and so we can extend a tau or smooth neighborhoods from the residual gerb to the stack. That's another way of thinking about that original theorem. And then we sort of realized that there's no, re no reason really to specialize uh, to the case where this is just a point. So the idea is to replace this with an arbitrary closed substack. And, uh, and in fact, essentially with a lot of hard technical work, the same method goes through and we recover sort of the following extension theorem of, of a tau and smooth neighborhoods. This is the, what we call the slice theorem for pairs. Uh, and it's just the statement that, uh, and here there's no, yeah, there's, there's very weak hypothesis. Any tau or smooth map from an affine, here it's important that this is an affine, can be extended to an affine neighbor, uh, to an, a tau or smooth neighborhood here. And in fact, with some other hypothesis, you can also get syntomic. Um, and moreover, 
here I'm extending affines. You can also extend uh, affines mod GLNs. So you can extend these nice sort of affine quotient stacks. Can I ask something? So sure. is the statement that there exists some A? Yeah, yeah. The statement is that there, there exists. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, like the hypothesis are, are in black and the conclusion is in purple. Yeah. And I think as far as I know, in this case, like this theorem was even new when X is a scheme. And we have the following pretty cool application of this, which is to uh, push out in, so we can, we have really a, a, a very general, you do need to assume that these are quasi separated, but so, uh, but then the, the push out exists. Um, and so this sort of gives, I mean, there's a long history of pushouts in algebraic geometry. Uh, I would say the most important cases were already known. This is sort of like a definitive final statement, but usually like when this is a closed, then, then you're like gluing two schemes along a closed sub scheme. I mean, pushouts were known to exist for a while for that, or, uh, or for finite morphisms, but in this complete generality, which is sometimes useful, uh, yeah, this 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 is a new result. Okay, but now, now let me get to the second part of uh, this talk, which is about coherent completeness, and uh, let me motivate this for now from a different perspective. We already saw in the proof why why it's relevant. But let me let me date back, go back to like Sarah's result on Gaga, which states that if you have a projective variety and you take its analytic analytification as as an analytic space, complex analytic space, then they have the same categories of coherent sheaves. Uh, actually, you know, while uh, Luna's slice paper was the second one I read in graduate school, this was the first one, Gaga's paper. The Sarah's backup paper, yeah. and uh, right, and then we have uh, kind of growth index version of formal Gaga, which says instead of considering its analytification, you you take the formal scheme, and so uh, but we won't state it using formal schemes. We'll just state that um, like if it the, the the hypothesis here is, I mean, you have X, it's proper. Hi, Jared. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jared. Um, oh, hi, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> ben Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. No, I didn't know you were here. It's good to hear your voice. 3.30 in the morning. 3.30. <laughs> so, so, Ben, you better... Uh, okay, it's 3.30 in the morning, but keep yourself muted until you have something to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, let me just spell out what this is. So, you have... Uh, stack proper over spec R. R is a complete local Noetherian ring. And, uh, and uh, so in particular, you have a central fiber, which we call X zero. And right, and, and so the statements is that giving a coherent sheaf on X is the same as giving compatible families of coherent sheaves on the thickening of this closed immersion. Right, and so this, uh, and so the notion of coherent completeness is just Sort of just captures this notion. Uh, so we say that a stack X is coherently complete along a closed subsack if it has this property. So in, in, in this language, this is saying X is coherently complete along X0. And uh, the coherent completeness result we needed to, to get the local structure theorem to go through. Was, was the following. Uh, we have, so in this case, yeah, so here we have uh, X is a quotient by spec A mod G, and we have the GIT quotient, which is the spectrum of the invariance. And here are the key things we're assuming this is complete local Noetherian ring. Uh, in particular, you, you know, you have the residue field K so you can take the you can take the fiber like in in formal Gaga, 
Um, but the conclusion actually is that it's, it's coherently complete along uh, the residual gerb of, of the unique closed point. Well, so let me just highlight this here. This, is, this here is the GIT quotient. Um, and it, it's a complete local ring, right? So this has, this has a unique maximal ideal. And that imp implies just by properties of GIT quotients that there exists um, a unique closed point here. And therefore, if you take the residual gerb of that closed point, you know, that gives you a closed substack. And this sits inside the fiber, but they can be very different. And so the conclu our, the, our conclusion is that, uh, is that yeah, X, X is coherently complete along the residual derivative. And in particular, that implies that it's coherently complete along the fiber. Um, but let me, and let me give you an example and to, to, to uh, let me just give it, yeah, let me give an example. Let's take GM acting on AN, but just by the scaling action. So in this case, there's no invariance, right? So all orbits have zero in its closure. So the GIT quotient is just a point. And so here you see, you know, that there's a big difference between uh, the fiber over the, like the, the fiber here is, is the entire stack. Uh, and so like, I mean, uh, so like if you were, the, the, the statement that is coherently complete along the, 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 the special fiber has no content here, but to say that it's coherently complete along the origin does have content. And it, it's sort of saying that, you know, we have, and you have the origin to, that to give a, a GM equivariant coherent sheet on all of affine space is the same as just giving co coherent sheets on the thickenings of the origin. And the, 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 the reason it sort of works conceptually is that you have all the orbits are going into the origin. And so you can use sort of the GM action to, to, to flow towards the or origin to like to, uh, so that somehow just, just by giving it structure in a formal neighborhood of the origin is enough using the, the flowing out to, to get the entire structure, if that makes any sense. Uh, right, and so I label this theorem as if it's a characteristic zero, but I mean, this is valid in any characteristic. It's just that the key, Assumption is that the, that G is linearly reductive, and that's a very strong hypothesis in, in positive characteristic. Uh, in, in, in positive characteristic, linearly reductive groups, well, at least the smooth ones are all extensions of finite groups by by tori. So the con connected linearly reductive groups are just tori. So it's very restrictive. So, for instance, if you want to apply this to the moduli of vector bundles over a curve in positive characteristic. You couldn't because those stabilizers can be like G GL, GLNs. Um, and so, what we'd like to do, and sort of like uh, so what I'm working on now, is trying to extend these theorems to, uh, to positive characteristic. And so, we, so the, the goal is sort of uh, the following conjecture. So, in, in this first theorem here, this is exactly what was on the last page. That's what we proved with. Uh, with with uh, Jack Paul and David Reed. And, uh, and what I'd like to conjecture is that the same thing is true uh, in, in, in positive characteristic where you replace linearly reductive with, with reductive, basically the same hypothesis. And the reason, I mean, I don't have a, real, a deep reason to make this conjecture. I'm just an optimist. I just hope it's true. <laughs> I mean, the, the motivation, I guess, like, we know it's true if it's linearly reductive. We also know it's true, you know, uh, in the, for finite groups. Um, and maybe even as further evidence, uh, what, what we showed recently uh, with, with Jack and, and Ben is that it's true if, uh, in the special case that the stabilizers are identified with the field. Um, and, uh, yeah, in this case, yeah, is 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 also yeah non non trivial, um, and so I'd like to like in, in the last ten minutes or twenty minutes, uh, sketch how that works.
Yeah. I should say, you know, before COVID, I never used to give talks with slides. And so all of a sudden I'm giving talks with slides and I'm finding I'm racing through my talks. I'm done in 40 minutes. So I, I apologize if I'm going too fast. I think we can also slow you down with questions. I think there were some questions about applications later on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll let other people ask them. Um, right, so let me explain sort of the method of, of, of proof here. Uh, Oh, Jared, if you would like someone to slow you down, uh, I'm wondering if this notion of relative reductivity, when H is a subgroup of G, there's this notion and prime characteristic of H being reductive relative to G oh. uh, by Benjamin Martin and his co-authors. Oh. Does that come up here? Uh, perhaps, but yeah, I'm not familiar with, with that. Maybe I should look into it. Uh, so is that is that uh, a, a like a positive characteristic? Yeah. Notion or any characteristic? Yeah, it's it's an in between notion between linear reductivity and reductivity that for a number of problems it turns out to be the right one, but in characteristic zero they're all the same. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, it's a nice comment. I'll look into that. Right. Uh, so like the, overall, the, 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 the general strategy that we have, to, that we're gonna to try to prove is sort of similar to how you prove anything about reductive groups. You use the, sort of the structure theory of reductive groups that, and you use the maximal torus. Uh, and, and so our strategy is gonna to be to reduce to the maximal torus via descent. And here I sort of highlight uh, sort of three different properties that you may want. First is coherent completeness, I already spelled this out. But sort of part of coherent completeness is this formal functions theorem. If you look at what it means for this to be uh, fully faithful, is that, or well, is that you get uh, an identification of or at least H H zero here. But to say that it satisfies formal functions is to say that the cohomology can be computed uh, formally. And we also introduced this concept. Uh, uh, co cohomologically proper, which just means that for every coherent sheaf, the cohomology is finite. And this is, and these can be non-zero, can be non-zero uh, for I, you know, arbitrarily large. Sort of, yeah, like e even, like if you look at the group cohomology of Z mod P and characteristic P, you can, you can have Call, uh, group cohomology in arbitrarily high degree. And for the same reason on an algebraic stack, you can have, uh, yeah, cohomology in infinitely. Yeah, sorry, infinite Jerry, degrees. can I say something about the cohomology being infinite in every degree? Yeah, so this is actually a huge problem. The fact that the cohomology is unbounded in every possible degree. Like for a very long time, I looked at what Jack Hall did. And I was like, why the fuck can't we just extend this goddamn thing from like algebraic spaces to stacks? And it turns out that every goddamn thing in Jack's paper, you need the cohomology to vanish after a certain point. And this is not true for all of this crap. So all that crap about like pseudo coherent complexes, whatever, all the bullshit just doesn't work. So you gotta do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because all of these things are, are related. Like, you, like maybe to show like that this functor is fully faithful, you just need that the formal functions is true on H zero, but to get that as true, you, 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 it's, it's good to, it's, you need, we, we prove it in, in general. Uh, and this finiteness of the cohomology too is sort of, we, we use as, as a, a stepping stone to get the coherent completeness. Um, and also, so, the, the, so uh, this proposition here is just sort of saying that these three properties descend and they descend in a very general topology. So uh, here we take a universally submersive morphism. What that means is it's just, uh, well, uh, it's surjective and the topology of X is induced, is the quotient topology of Y. Um, and, uh, and I mean, and the, and the reason we need this hypothesis here is not a secret. Like we have Y over X. There's a theorem of Raynaud and Groussin this flatification result that that you can you can blow up x 
And if you take the strict transform of y, you can make this map to be flat. So this map becomes proper and birational. And so, in this, so essentially, you know, this this proposition just reduces to two to two different statements, uh, like the case where it's proper and birational, and where it's flat. Uh, and okay, but let me finish the statement here. So the, the 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 statement is that you can conclude that your closed substack has one of these properties: coherent completeness, cohomology properness, um, as long. Uh, as not only y has it, but all of the higher fiber products of y over x. So here we have you have y over x. You have this closed substack x zero. You have the preimage y zero, and then you have and then you have the higher ones, and so on. And so what you need to check is that the preimage of x zero uh, that 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 all of these stacks are have this property with respect to the, the preimages of, of x0. And also oh, maybe yeah, like if y to x is proper and surjective, um, because proper morphism is, you know, like the, the proper, like the push forward of coherent sheep is coherent, they have, you know, a finite cohomology and, and so on, like um, that you get, uh, yeah, and, and for the proper case, you only you don't need to check all of the fiber products. You just need to check that the preimage that that y is say is coherently complete along y zero. But for flat morphisms, you need to check all, all of the, the higher fiber products. Okay, so how do we apply this? Um, and let me do. I'm going to do two cases. First, I'll do I'll do sort of a warm up case. Uh, so here we're taking g over spec R, this is complete local Netherian. And then we take the closed fiber. And, and the, 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 the claim is that this, that we want to show that B G zero, that this is coher coherently complete. And the strategy is, is via descent. So we, we have we have BG here. And so, so we use like a maximal torus inside of Borel inside of G. And we argue using this, comp this composition here. And because G is reductive, G mod B is projective. So this map is actually is, is proper or projective. It's objective. All of these maps are subjective. And this map is flat. And the point is, this T is, is a torus. In particular, it's linearly reductive. Uh, so we know that if I take the central fiber here, this is coherently complete. Uh, and right, this is coherently complete. But moreover, we need to check the higher fiber products. But you can sort of compute that if you take BT cross BT over BB, this is sort of identified with the, the action of the unipo, uh, the torus on the, on the quotient of B mod T. And you can check that this actually has uh, a, a, a good quotient, which is a point. Like there's no invariance of the, of the maximal torus acting on the affine scheme, which is the, the, the unipotent uh, B mod T. And so that, that, so that, yeah, that implies that all of these fi higher fiber pro products have this property. And so we can conclude using that first descent result that this is coherently complete. And then because this is proper and surjective, we then get that this is coherently complete. So it is really, the argument is really just to reduce to the maximal torus. Great. Um, so this was the case where we really had no uh, interesting action. So we're now going to move to sort of the case that uh, we proved with, J with Jack and Ben, which is the case when the invariants are a field. And and maybe an example to keep in mind, let's think about SL3 
acting on A3 as the, the standard representation. Right here you have, here you just have two orbits. You have a dense orbit and you have the origin. So certainly there's no, there's no invariant. So our theory, like if the conjecture is true, it should hold in it, yeah, in this case. Um, and right, so let me, let me, let's see here. Uh, so let's see, let's see. We, so, so, we, so in general, let, let's see. So here, here's uh, how I think of this. You have this action of G on this affine scheme, spec A. And because the invariants are just a field, you know, you, uh, there's, there's, there exists a unique closed orbit. Unique closed orbit, say GX. And for the purpose of, of this talk, this actually makes the, 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 the proof much simpler, is let's assume, let's actually assume that X is fixed by G. Uh, okay. And so, uh, so because there's, in this case, yeah, now we have just a, a unique closed orbit, which is this point X. Uh, and if I have any other point, here I'm, I'm taking K points, then we know that X is in the closure of the orbit of Y, right? Uh, so this, you know, goes to X. And by the Hilbert Mumford criterion, You can actually arrange that that there's a one parameter subgroup that that witnesses this specialization such that x is the limit as t goes to zero of lambda t dot y. So this goes to x. Um, but if I choose a different point, you know, I, I may need a different one parameter subgroup. Uh, okay, so that's not great. And actually something to keep in mind here is this is sort of like the dynamical method that, you, that is used in, in, in uh, reductive group schemes where you study things via these one parameter subgroups. And, uh, and so what, what we're gonna use is, is this spectacular result of Kempf. Well, it, it's Kempf's, Kempf's result uh, sort of implies this, implies actually that there's a one parameter subgroup Uh, with the following two properties. One is that if I look at all of the points that have a limit under lambda, so let's say this is all y in x, such that the limit exists um, that this intersects every orbit. i.e. I mean, if I translate this closed subvariety around by G, it's all of X. Um, over here, in this case, let, let, let's actually, in, in the example, let's consider a point X, which is one, one, zero. Um, and if you think about, uh, and, and, and let's take lambda, like it, it, Kempf might give you a, a lambda, which is, um, uh, say t, t, t inverse, or t to the minus two, right, as a one parameter subgroup in, in SL3. And note that in this case, x plus lambda, for there to be a limit to exist, you need the z coordinate to be, to, to be zero. So this is x plus lambda. And indeed, in this case, we see it intersects every orbit because there's just two. <laughs> and, uh, and the second property is that you need, is that, uh, that the fixed locus uh, lambda fixes only uh, x, only that point. I mean, otherwise to arrange one, you could take lambda to be the trivial one parameter subgroup. 
Uh, right, uh, that's, um, that's great. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I ran out of space here. Mm. Okay, let me do it over here. So you, we have, we have G and a, a one parameter subgroup, you know, you can look at the centralizer L lambda. This is the Levy subgroup. This is the centralizer. And we can also look at the, the parabolic. And in fact, if you think about uh, lambda acting on G via conjugation, this parabolic is exactly this locus, this plus locus, X plus lambda, the locus where there exists a limit. That is, that is the parabolic subgroup. And, and the Levi is the, is the stabilizer of that. I mean, the centralizer of that. And then the whole idea is, well, let me, let me zoom in now. Let's see. And the whole idea is you consider that you consider the factorization x g x plus lambda mod t lambda, the parabolic x on that, and x plus lambda mod the centralizer. And as before, sort of the, the, the condition that G times X plus Lambda equals G implies that this is surjective. And we already know that this is proper. And this map is flat. And so we can use that same argument I was outlining before to sort of reduce coherent completeness of X mod G to coherent completeness of this. Um, but Unfortunately, L lambda is not a maximal torus in general. Like in this example, L lambda is the three by three matrices, these block diagonal ones. And we don't know the conjecture for these, these groups, right? This is not linearly reductive. So what we do is we take Kemp's result and then we just sort of tweak lambda. We modify it, keeping these conditions one and two, but ensuring that lambda is a regular subgroup. So we need lambda to be regular, meaning that the centralizer is a, is a maximal torus. And in this example, all you do is you just add, you can just add like an exponent here, you just say two, and then you make this a minus three. And now the centralizer is, is a maximal torus and you haven't changed X plus lambda and, X, and the argument actually goes through. Um, uh, I think this would be a good place to stop. Uh, thanks for your attention. Let's unmute ourselves and thank Jared. So now we have, uh, so there's some, uh, well, are there any general questions? And also there's some specific questions of applications that I think are worth, uh, are worth uh, asking too, that hopefully people ask. Should we ask about the, okay, so, uh, so I need to go back a second to, to, uh, to, to the, well, I guess the explicit applications of, the explicit applications of this that you both have in mind and that, mm -hmm. that has been used, that earlier versions have been used for. Well, okay, yeah, I could say this. This is, this is the, the application I'm, I have most cared about. Uh, And so this is the th a theorem with, with Halper and Leisner and uh, Johann Heinloth. That, so here, I'll state it uh, quite generally. Let's see, we have, let's take X to be an algebraic stack with affine diagonal. And I'll say finite type over uh, an Ethereum scheme. And um, that all I need. Uh, yeah, and then the, 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 the theorem is that there exists um, a good moduli space with X. This is a separated 
algebraic space if and only if the stack satisfies two conditions, S complete and, and theta reductive. And so uh, these are sort of magical conditions that actually not only ensure the existence uh, of, of a good moduli space, but, uh, but actually also that it's separated. And so, I, I mean, it's, and actually the, the proof of this theorem is quite easy uh, once you know these conditions uh, and like, and like, and, and the use of the local structure theorem is very transparent. Like you take X, we, we want to produce a map to some algebraic space that is the, like the roughest, the, the most scheme-like or algebraic space-like approximation of the algebraic stack. And the way we produce this is by using these et al charts. And using the fact that here, this is just a reductive group on an affine, so you could take the, the GIT quotient. Um, and, and these conditions ensure that you can glue these in the etal topology to construct uh, X. And that's one, that's one application. <clears throat> 